All right, guys, I'm fucking so excited for this one here. I got my man, Dean Philpot. This guy's a good friend of mine and uh, somebody that actually, unfortunately for him, when I first started in real estate, I was in the office literally right next door to Dean at Remax. And the walls are so paper thin. This poor guy probably couldn't even work out of his office because it was so loud with me in there with my headset on just doing my thing. But uh, we built a genuine friendship in those early days, Dean, and uh, it's continued yeah. on to today. And I'm actually super excited for you to share your colorful fucking journey in, in life, real estate. So guys, just so you guys know, Dean, I mean, the guy's built multiple businesses, uh, you know, guys built an impressive net worth for himself. Uh, he's done very, very well in his life. And uh, he's a very unique guy in the sense that like, I don't know anybody just like you, bud. And I love that. You know, you're a fucking colorful person. You are who you are. And I love it. I don't think you should ever change that. Uh, you have a lot of wisdom. This guy's not only had a best selling book, he's been a, a real estate coach. He's built a massive mega real estate business. And then you know what? Uh, we're going to talk about that whole journey of how you rebuilt that business again in a completely different market. So Dean, here we are, buddy. Let's uh, let's start back. When did you start in real estate? Maybe walk us through that journey of when you actually started in the game. Sure. Thank you. Uh, and number one, everybody, thank you. Thanks for having me on here. I'm always honored. And, and Jason's got, he nailed it. Like we've become good friends, and um, and 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 I love the the value proposition that we always seem to give each other, right? And we keep each other in track when we're around each other. And it's been it's been a beautiful relationship. And uh, and I'm so I'm honored always to be here to be able to uh, to give something of value for the people that Jason's uh, now, you know, in the network. Cause uh, I think that's, that's, that's where it really all starts because we don't do this journey on our own. And when you do, you end up falling into some of the traps that I fell into in my first career. So um, I was, it was back in year 2000. That even sounds like a long time ago, but well, that's 22 years ago. So that's when I first started my real estate career. And, um, and everybody had always told me, it's like, oh my God, Dean, you know, I mean, I mean, I know I have this outgoing personality. So everybody always said to me, well, man, you should get, get into real estate. And I'm like, oh my God, that sounds like a lot of education first. So of course, then I got lured in by the fact that I thought, well, everybody in real estate, well, they have lots of money. They drive really fancy cars and they never seem to be at work. They're always on vacation. So why wouldn't I become a realtor? And so, uh, so that's what happened. And, um, and I mean, I think, you know, where Jason was going to go with this is like, and that's what I thought I was going to be getting. And nine months into my first real estate year, I had zero sales and I was driving the same old car and I hadn't taken a vacation. So everything was completely opposite of what I thought it was going to be. And that's, so that's, let's, that's the let's first stop there for a second. Let's stop there for a second. How, okay. Because there's a lot of people that are listening to this right now that maybe yeah. have been there. Maybe there's some people that are getting through that first year. Maybe they have agents on their teams that are trying to like figure out how to get through the first year. You did zero sales in the first nine months in real estate. How did you keep yourself motivated and how did you, um, you know, continue to move things forwards? Well, I think for me, the, the motivated thing was just, uh, I, I couldn't fail. I, I couldn't imagine failing. I, I mean, because uh, this is something that I, I had wanted and I studied for nine months. And I think the bigger thing was, uh, maybe it was failing because I had told everybody when I was studying for this exam for that year, I had two kids and I was a single dad. So, I mean, this was a big deal for me. And then to go in and not sell any homes for nine months, I'm like, oh my God, that would just be a complete failure. So I think that was my biggest motivation. It's like, no, no, if somebody else can do it. And also, I mean, I also knew that I was kicking ass. I was out doing all the things that many of the people that told me, Dean, you got to do this if you want to be successful. I was doing all those things, but I just, they hadn't, there wasn't enough time behind me to put them into fruition yet. And so um, certainly the scarce, the being scared of failing was the big one. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I was, a, I was in a small town and so I did have other jobs as well. And so I had some other income coming in. It certainly wasn't, you know, wasn't enough to, you know, last a, a lifetime of no sales. But the bigger thing was, um, yeah, I knew that I was watching other people in the office and I'm like, oh my God, I know my energy is better, better more than this. And if they can do this, so can I. And so, uh, so, so I was hard at her. And those nine months, I wasn't staying at home. I was hitting the streets and I was doing all the things. Again, this is the key. I was doing all the things that other people told me what to do. So what, like, what finally clicked for you? Like, what was it that like, you know, okay, the, the thing started turning in the right direction after nine months, like maybe walk us through that. Right. There was a couple things uh, in that first nine months. I mean, you know, it took me a year to get my license. So during that, I was getting lots of education, but in the first nine months, um, <clears throat> 
I started attending whatever I could find to attend when he come, like there was a conference that had happened right away. So I remember going to a conference and, and taking in all this information. And, um, and one of the things that always stuck with me, uh, when a guy walked up on the stage that day, or I think it was a lady actually, and, um, and she had said, There's only, you only need one good idea to take away from here. So whatever works for you. And so that idea, that particular time, was she had said, okay, there was three things. She said that you, you got to go back to your hometown and do this. I said, okay, this sounds good. Um, go back and you got to find yourself a hook. I had to go on, I had to go on Google and understand, well, what the hell is a hook? You know, so, so find yourself a hook. So what, what it is it about me and my personality that I'm going to give that nobody else has to offer? So that was, that was number one. And so, and then stick with that and be authentic to that hook. Don't do any plagiarism. It's not about anybody else. This is about how will you best express yourself in your real estate business? Be who you are to what you do, and you'll always have whatever it is you want. I'll never forget that. And in those days, I mean, those days, that's a long time ago, you guys, that's 22 years ago. Uh, maybe some of you guys are just 22 years old. I don't know, some pretty young looking people here. Uh, the next thing was put your picture on everything that you do so people feel that they know you. And I'm like, oh, wow. And I was the first guy. I was living in Whitehorse, Yukon at the time. And the town only had 20,000 people. And uh, so there was nobody's picture on their signs. There was nobody pictures. There was, you know, I wasn't doing Facebook at the time, but there's no pictures nowhere. And so I started planting my picture on my everything I had. And then everywhere I would go, people walk up and go, hey, I know you. And I'm like, ah, you, ah, you think you know me, but you don't. You know my picture. So everything's changed. My email signatures, uh, you know, the signs. And when social media came out, uh, picture was everywhere. And then the last thing was pick a farm area and just stick with it. That was the three things that started my career. So I was doing all this stuff like, like a mad dog and still no results. So I'm like, oh my God, what have I done wrong? And what I knew I was on the right track is when everybody in my own office came back and they said, you know, Dean, this stuff you're doing, that's not how you do real estate. That's, you know, like this is, you, you learned a stuff at the conference. You got to be here and you got to do this. You got to do that. And I knew when everybody told me in my office that I was doing it wrong, I knew I was on to something. And you know what? It was less than, so once it started to take, once, once I got my first sale, underneath my belt it started to go like wildfire and a year later uh, I, I was just I was I was I'm going to say I was on a fast track to be a number one in that town and that's what happened so what was the hook the hook, hey so I for, oh yeah I guess people don't know this but uh, so so um okay I, I gotta start back where the story started a lady walked in the office and she was asking for me but she didn't know what my name was. She goes, there's some guy, he's a bald guy. And I, I don't know who he is. He's just bald. And, and so, so the lady, so my receptionist came back and said, oh my goodness, Dean, this is really funny. Somebody don't know your name, but they called you the bald guy. And I'm like, oh yeah, whatever, great. So I walked up. This happened three times in one month. And the third time it happened, I'm like, holy shit, this is my hook. So this is another reason when someone looked at me and, and when I started, I, I was going to fill out my, um, my advertising form. And I said, call Dean, no, I said, call the bald guy. And asked for, you know, I called Dean Phil, but the bald guy. And so when the people in my office saw that, they said, Dean, you're going to make a mockery of our industry. You can't just go around saying that you're a bald man selling real estate. And the more resistance I got, the more I knew I was on the right track. And so I posted this ad on a Friday paper doing some advertising. And then the whole town lit up within a few days. Oh, my God, Dean, we saw this is brilliant. And this is when things started to change for me. It, that's how, so that was where the hook came in. Now, you can't expect that everybody here is going to be, you know, calling themselves the bald person, the bald, you know, I mean, it's just not going to work. But my point was, it's like, you know, what works for you? You know, and there was a lady down here in Nanaimo, apparently. And so I moved, I moved towns eventually. We'll talk about that. But there's a lady here in Nanaimo in our marketplace. Now, when people meet me and go, oh, you're the bald guy. They say, do you know the hat lady? And I'm like, what the hat lady? She was here apparently 20 years ago and she did a fantastic business, retired and moved on. Nobody knows her name. There you it's go. The lady with her, I remember when I was a kid, she was the lady with the hat. That was right. like her, that was her thing. And there you go. You were the ball guy and you still are the ball guy real estate team nowadays. And so that was a brand, you know, that, and, and it really stuck guys. And so once that brand got out and of course I made it very approachable, I made it fun. And when people, you know, were resisting that, like, what are you some, like, I just, I just played with it. I, it was always a comfortable role for me to, to walk into. And eventually people didn't know my name. And I had kids in grocery stores walking up and going, mom, 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 look, that's the bald man. That's the bald guy. And I was like, holy shit, this is really working. And so I've always been a big um, advocate for finding, you know, what it is that's going to work for your own heart and what's going to represent you well in your industry and still have respect and fun with it. 
I love that. And, and this is exactly something I've been always telling people is like, you need your own personal brand. I might use different sure. words than a hook or whatever. I call it your own personal brand sure. where you have your own identity and you've done an amazing job in now two markets and we'll get into the yes. second market. Yeah. Like you've literally had like two real estate careers. So let's talk about this. 100%. Okay. So you got through the first year. Yeah. All of a sudden things just are taking off for you. Yeah. So I walk mean, us what, through that journey of being like that, that rock star top agent and just like what that was like, you know, talk us through the highs first. Sure. Well, understand there's only 25,000 people in that little thing. And I walked in and there was a uh, 20, I think it was 45 agents with uh, in, in a town of 40, 35, 40,000 people at the max. And so I was walking into a pretty stiff, uh, you know, people didn't know me, but after that first year, the bald thing got recognized. Uh, I ran a few ads on the radio and I got my daughter involved and she was just like five or six years old. Hi, call my dad, the bald guy at Rima, you know, and she was just doing her thing. And so I made it, got the family involved. Um, and then uh, I picked a farm area and I started farming really heavily. And we can talk about that if somebody doesn't know what farming is and just being consistent in that farm area with my notepads, I was banging on doors. I was unstoppable. And then all of a sudden my income from the first year, I think the first year I made a hundred grand after like once my gear kicked in after the eight months, I made a hundred grand. The next year it doubled. And then I'm like, oh my God, this is back in 2002 or three. And I'm making now 200 grand. I'm like, holy shit, this is really working. And then, so it just kept on going for the 10 years that I was in Whitehorse and um, became a big fish then in a small pond. And people thought there was only one guy in town and that was Dean. And so I, I really enjoyed that that amount of, I mean, it was huge success. And, uh, and I think Jason, that's where you're going with this. I mean, it, it can happen, and, but it was, a, it was a combination of a whole bunch of stuff that really worked. And the stuff that wasn't working, I stopped doing. And because, I mean, the old fashioned guys were like, well, listen, you know, you got to do this and you got to do that. And whatever it was, I don't remember it because I didn't hang on to it. But I just remember having to do not a lot of the, what people told me, but I went out and found what was working for me and that fit me. So the firm area, the hook. And so my business took off. So it was just one of those things. And now this would be hard to believe. Now this, uh, and I believe this gives me a little bit of bragging rights. And I say this not to impress you, but to impress up on you. You can really be busy. Now in my busiest day, now guys, this is hard to believe. And so this, you got to wrap your head around this. But I mean, remember, I'm in a small town and I, I kept contracts with me. I listed, I think 13 homes in one day myself. And I wrote 12 offers in one day myself, not on those 13 homes. Now I was on fire and I was in my thirties and I had lost control of everything going on in life. And all I knew how to do was ask people to sign. I go, hey, guys, you like the house, right? I showed you it last week. If you trust me, sign here. Bam, send it. And so this is the way I was doing real estate. Now, that's not the most ideal. This is not, trust me, this is not a training session right now for being, uh, you know, regulatory. But all I'm saying is, I, you know, it, we had the ability to go and do that kind of business because of what, you know, we put together. So we were, yes, we become a rock star. And I say we, but really it was me. And I'm kind of humble about it. But in the same breath, all that success uh, had a really hard pitfall uh, at the end of the day. And I think just where Jason wants to go next is I can see him shaking his head going, okay, but what would happen next? Well, okay. I mean, so you're like, for a lot of people, um, they get in the industry and they want to be the number one agent in their right. market and they're chasing, like, it's really ego. Let's yep. be honest. They're chasing those oh, yep. ego, the trophies, the awards, yep. the recognition. You had that, right? Everybody knew you in town. You know, I'm sure um, you had no problem, you know, making things happen. Uh, when it came to opportunities and everything else, like you were literally a rock star in your market. Yep. What happened, man? I mean, you did this for what, 10, 12 years? So I did that for 10, for 10 years. Uh, I mean, and, and then, so the best year I had, I think I was doing 110 deals by myself with a part-time after school assistant, you know, and I was slamming this by myself. But guys, what happened was, uh, you know, listen, this is not going to be a secret to anybody now. I, I got burnt out right quick. I mean, after 10 years, uh, you know, and so I'll just, you know, if I was to go through the whole 10 years, it might bore you. But uh, at the end of the day, guys, I had two, two, you know, I ended up divorced twice. Um, I lost millions. I was very unhappy. And at, you know, in February, 2010, that was the 10 year mark. I was, uh, I was extremely unhappy, sick and very broke. And I was living in a million dollar mansion with five bays, a garage full of every toy known to mankind. And I woke up and my house was empty. And so that was burnout and I had lost control and I forgot to look back. And I was, I was, I was doing all this stuff. And, you know, somebody would ask me at any time, what's the most important thing in your life? And I would have always said my family, but, you know, unconsciously, I, I just started, I mean, because my clients were always number one, 
You know, I went to every one of my kids' soccer games. Don't 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 get me wrong. I went to every soccer game, but I didn't remember or ever see any of my kids score a goal because I was down and I was signing either documents or meeting with people about a about a real estate deal. And so, and again, I believe that God put this road to me because I was the person that can learn from it to teach people just like this on this call that like, please don't don't replicate what I just said. No, no, there's a different way to do shit. Because, because that was not right. Now, however, I do feel blessed that I still have my kids and I, I re reestablished my life. But I woke up and I had become the person that I'd never wanted to be. And my ego was in so much control of my life uh, because of everywhere I went, oh, you're the top realtor. And in a small town, you walk into a fancy restaurant, like, hey, that's Dean, uh, clear the table. I felt like, oh my God, talk about narcos. I mean, you know, that was just moving in there. And, you know, they can they fed into my ego and I bought into it. And let me tell you something. Ego states this. I am what I have. I am what other people think of me. I am my job. And most egregiously, I'm separate from everybody and God. So now when your ego is taken over, I am what I have. So then you're driving around a fancy car. You think you're your car. You drive. Oh, I'm a realtor. Look at me. I'm the top realtor in town. Look at me. Uh, guys, I had just lost. I had lost my soul in the in the depths of this business. And so one of my passions when I finally came out of that and I was alive to talk about it, I knew that God had chose me to do this and say, Dean, when you are in front of people that are in this position and they're going to go out and explode their life, you better tell them what the fuck happened to you because that can happen to them too. And, and, and so to go one further, I'll be, I'll be authentic. I mean, I, I'll go one level deeper, guys. When I woke up in 2010, I, I woke up and I was, I had two weeks. I had just become, I, I felt like um, my whole world had fell apart. And I woke up one morning and I put a handful of my Oxycontin that I got hooked on because that's the only thing I could survive with. And I put it in my left hand and I, I went to put it in my mouth. And I wanted to leave the planet because I wasn't even me that time. I was, I was so not myself. And I um, and so when I went to do this, my hand shook and it lifted it over my toilet and it dropped the pills down the toilet. And so that wasn't me. That was that was my chance at survival. And that was the day God says, now listen, here's the deal. I let you go this far. I will give you another chance, but don't do this again because you know I might not be here to take your hand away from your mouth next time. So that's what happened back then. So wow. that's where my real estate took me. Wow. So, Man, that's, that's, you know, that's some deep stuff. Thank you for that is deep. up like that. And here's the deal. And the thing guys, is, I promised God too? that I would tell this story if, if, when the time is right. So that's why I never say no to this because it's so important because, guys, this can happen to any one of us in this room or on this call. It can happen. You were 42 years old, Dean. Yeah. 42 years old. <laughs> You'd, you'd had all the success in the world when it comes to like anything measurable in real estate, right? You'd won yeah. probably every award under Remax that you could have, everything. Yeah. And you had no family by your side anymore. You're alone in a fucking mansion with all the toys in the world feeling completely yeah. empty. Guys, when we talk about like having purpose, having a yeah. why, right? This is why, because I've met so many people like Dean who are doing this for ego and yeah. ego is the most empty thing on the planet, guys. I promise you. I, I was very blessed before getting in the real estate, Dean, that I, I got to work closely with realtors for two years in a consulting yeah. capacity. Yeah. And I saw an industry riddled with ego. And I see a lot of people that look up to a lot of high producers. Yeah. But what they don't see is that this is the yeah. emptiness. I mean, yeah. how many birthdays and how many vacations did you ruin, Dean, because you were constantly working on a deal? Be honest, man. I remember, I remember, Jason, when you say stuff like that, I remember bringing a client home uh, and, and to my wife's birthday and never told her. I forgot to tell her. And I brought lobster home. And she's like, Dean, who are these people? I'm like, well, they're my clients. They just flew in today and I forgot. It's like, fuck. And I remember looking at me. She goes, Dean, I can't do this. I can't, I can't do this. I can't fucking do this. And this was, this was the stuff that was going on all the time. And I made myself believe that this is normal for a real estate agent. And, and, and the kids' birthdays, well, I mean, again, I was always there. My, my, my precious little kids, I was always there, but like never present. And my wife had said, Dean, you've never, you know, you've always been around, but she goes, you've never been present. Mm -hmm. And so, guys, that's the part that can happen to anybody. And so that's, so that's when things change, right? And so now we'll talk about the change. Sure, and sure. so I woke up, I woke up. Uh, and and kind of, you know, those pills went down the toilet. I got myself a good uh, a psychologist. And I said, hey, listen, I think I'm going nuts. I said, because everything that was important to me, 
you know, like all this for fame and fortune, money, kids, it's no longer important. I woke up and all of a sudden, none of this matters anymore. What is going on with me? And she goes, Dean, I think you might have entered into the afternoon of your life, and that's okay. But she goes, you're also going through some changes. And she goes, by the way, you know, like maybe it's time to do an ego check in. And that's when I started knowing what was going on with my ego. And so, so when I started getting a little bit more, I'm not never really going to say control of it. Cause I think a certain amount of ego is good. It gives us some motivation. Some days we want to be okay. But um, when I started getting some help, um, I started searching in different places versus where I was always getting my help. So here's the deal. Here's the key word right now. For those 10 years, I was what's called an unconscious competent. I was getting shit done and making stuff happen, but didn't know how to do it. And so then when I started understanding that, Dean, if I'm going to do this again, because that was my real estate. I love real estate. I love people. I love my family. If I'm going to do it, I got to do it in a different manner. I got to do this different. Somehow this has got to be different. So when I started looking in different places to get the advice that I need, now all of a sudden, guys, that's where the awareness comes in. You know, what are you reading these days? Joe loves this part. You know, how do we raise our level of awareness, right? Through a book, a place, a person. And, uh, you know, and, and an affirmation. I started going, so I, I met up with a, a company called the Bob Proctor. So he was a guy, he had a company called Proctor uh, Seminars. And, uh, and he was a personal development guy. So I started doing some personal development. And I started knowing about me. And so the more I could know about me is the better I could put it back into my. Oh, sorry, Dean, I accidentally muted you. I didn't mean, mean to. My bad. I was meaning to mute somebody else. Sorry. Can you unmute yourself? Where do I need to pick up? There we go. Perfect. Just the last 10 seconds. Okay, cool. So I met, so I, I, I basically, I started investing money into myself instead of my business after that. And the more money you can put into yourself and the more uh, coaching you can get and the more books you can read and, and surround yourself guys with the people that are making the results that you want, not what you don't want. And that's the big thing. Being surrounded with this uh, a collaboration and a movement where everybody's on the same page and we, we're here to uplift each other, not just give each other stupid advice and, and to be able to be, hold each other accountable. And that's when I started joining mastermind groups, reading the right books. Um, Bob Proctor became a mentor. Uh, I had a spiritual mentor, Wayne Dyer. Uh, Wayne Dyer wrote a book, Your Spirit, uh, Inspiration. It changed my life. I was reading Inspiration when I decided, okay, I'm doing shit different. It's, I'm doing stuff different. And through all that process, of course, I started writing my own book because I knew there was something here. I knew, again, when, when, when my hand stopped and, and I didn't take that day to, to be too faithful, I, was, I knew that day I had to put my story in, in, on paper. And so Bob was the guy that helped me motivate me. It's like, Dean, this is just, you got to do this. And so I, I built a book and that's, so when that book came out, it was all about my failures and, and, and the little successes that we had and, and it makes us into who we are today. And so he wrote the forward for it and then it became a bestseller. And so then of course, after that, uh, of course, life changed. And uh, I found that when I was using these new levels of awareness tools, like making affirmations, you know, uh, reading the right books, having the right people, having the right coaches, I found that the results were different. I was still being able to do real estate, but I was in more control of my soul and my ha happiness. And then you no know, things started to change. And so that was probably the beginning of the change. So, okay. So just, just to kind of bring everybody up to speed here. So you spent about 10, 12 years up in Whitehorse. Is that right? Mm -hmm. you, you built a great business. You were on top of the world as far as everybody else could see when it came to like the game. From, the outside. The, from yeah. the outside, you were on top of the world. Inside, you were broke and empty. A hot mess train wreck from hell. So did you stop your business there at, in Whitehorse after that? rock bottom like is that when you kind of started so what i what i knew i that? wanted so yeah so at that point i thought well god i, I you know I, I i want to do this but i can't do it the same way i was doing it before so then of course you know the universe started at work because i became open to change and of course the book came out it got released and i realized i'm actually going to leave my real estate career and i'm actually going to go on the road here's the book here <laughs> you know so 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 you know, I turned it into a program called 20 Minutes to Platinum. And then I started going out and I started speaking to different areas. Once the book came out, I got invited. So it, it got so big where I, I didn't need the real estate anymore at that point. I kept my license. But um, so the first year I left, um, I think my referral fees alone. So I, I didn't sell my business because I, I, 
just some something in my heart to said, Dean, don't don't sell the bald guy real estate team or whatever I had going. It was a bald guy real estate company then. We didn't have a team. And so I just hung on to the name and I choose a guy and my successor. And so he would pay me referral fees for all my stuff that came in. So the first year I left, I think my referral fees alone were 250000 And then the second year, they went down to 125 and then 75 and they dwindled down. So after three years, the referral fees had stopped, but I had started my speaking career and my coaching company. And, uh, and then in that transition, my son had required um, some, some, a new lifestyle. And of course, we'll do anything for our kids. So I left and I moved down to beautiful Vancouver Island, right? Right where Justina and um, the, the, the whole uh, Anna's team lives, right? And Jason and everybody else. So I got to meet these people as, a, you know, as their coach and, and there was a few of them. But so I moved down there and I was five years basically out of the business where I wasn't really selling real estate. And then that's where I, um, um, my daughter had turned of age is what happened. And that was another shift. And my daughter turned of age. She's like, Dad, I'd like to get into the real estate business like, like you did in Yukon. And I'm like, oh, my God, I love you. I don't want to put you in there. But then I thought, you know what, Dean? Maybe if we were to do this on a second round and do it differently, what happens if we come in and do it like I should have done it the first time? And I hate the shit all over myself, but I just yeah, did. Yeah. But, but the point no, is, you, me up. <laughs> you know. Serving the Taylor. There we go. So. You know, so we so we so we came down and we decided to do that little business again. And so then it was my daughter joined me back in 2016 was when we joined Remax, I think. And so that's when we started our. our so I'm going to say my second career with Remax in 2016. And of course, that's when I met Jason. And I thought, okay, if we're going to do this. We better do it differently. And we want to operate out of our heart center and just you know my ego thing. You know, get this under control and start doing some business a little different. Now, the thing I didn't know at the time was you know, I automatically default to what you know. So of course I started getting a little busier, but then I look at people like Jason, who's just come in next door and I could hear his little voice right high in the next room. And he was walking around with his headphones on and, and he's just kicking ass. And I'm like, okay, this kid's on something different. Like I, I, I want to do, I want to, I want to start my, you know, we were doing our old traditional real estate matters, but I said, I want to do something a little different. And so I started watching Jason and I started watching his results and I'm like, oh my God, I think I'm double his age, but my God almighty, I suppose I could learn some new tricks, right? And so we got to know each other. And that's when Jason came out and asked me a few questions and I could keep him in track with ego if you could teach me real gates. Here's a trade, you know, what the hell is real gates? I didn't even know what DocuSign was when I moved here. You know, I, you know, honest to God, I didn't know what was going on. I mean, I've been out of the business for five years and I got down here and I thought, okay, everything I learned before, I can bring it but I can bring it in a different manner. And of course, then Jason watched me in the manner that I was bringing. <clears throat> and what I liked about it was we, we collaborated enough where you know, I could tell that this, this, th there's other ways to do things. And this is where I started learning from you, right? And this is where I was, we put our team together, our first team. Yeah. Well, so what Dean, <clears throat> what you did in the first, first business that you built with real estate is you did what most people do and that's exchange time for money. And you got Unconscious competency, yep. Right. You got trapped in, in, in a blue collar way of earning money, which is exchanging time for money, which is what most top producers. And that's kind of like the culture of real estate. The problem with that is, is you were one life event away from losing mm -hmm. it all. Yeah. And in fact, you pretty much kind of did. I mean, it's really sad when you think like you literally gave everything for 12 years and yeah. you really <clears throat> didn't have much tangible to show for it after you left. Let's just be honest. Right. No, like, no that's a, a true story. True story. I mean, two divorces later and, uh, and, and that's, and that's, you know, that's just the way it is, but that's my journey. And there was nothing left at the end of the day at that 12 years. And I mean, and I was a good realtor and you know, I was, I was meaning good, but I got lost. Right. And so what Dean did is he didn't have leverage. He didn't understand really like how to leverage himself the right way. And what he knew is just how to be a closer and put deals together and, and rely on his personality. Cause it's very dynamic. And some of you are making this mistake right now, building your businesses. And so when I started, when I started, I was a little different, right? Like I had hit my rock bottom before getting into real estate and people know my story. I'd hit that, you know, rock bottom stories do happen, you know, and they are, they can be a motivator. But the, the reality is when I came in, I was looking to build a business right from day one. And I immediately after three months, four months was investing in leverage. And like, there was a very clear plan on how to exit production. Now, I, I did the same thing you did for the first three and a half years. I was working seven days a week, doing 125 deals a year, just madman. The difference though, is I had a very clear plan on how to like shift and transition mm -hmm. in the business. 
And so when I exited production, you and I knew each other for about three mm -hmm. years at that point. Mm -hmm. And I'd started our coaching company and you were actually the first guy, my first actual coaching student that paid me for coaching. And I appreciated that your loyalty and everything else. And man, I remember, you know, it was, listen, it wasn't an easy journey that year we worked together, getting this going, right? Like, you know, trying to get you to like, change your mindset on some things oh, 100%. You, were used, you were used to doing things a certain way and it wasn't like a straight road to the top however it started happening by about the end of our coaching relationship right right before the pandemic hit like yep. you had the right people around you you had leverage you had your brand and guess what now you were doing real estate in a different manner. Like you weren't yeah. working 70, 80 hours a week, killing yourself. You had systems in place. So maybe talk about the difference. Like how many hours a week are you working in your business now? And how are the relationships with your kids? And how's your life now mm -hmm. in comparison to your first real estate career? Yeah. Wow. That's a big one. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it's like, it, it couldn't be no more polar opposite. It, it's completely polar opposite. Now, of course, the first couple of years that we got in down here was different, but uh, after, after understanding and watching other teams do, oh my God, wow. If you have a team and you can leverage, you know, and, and support the other people and not about yourself, uh, you know, you can earn a living uh, real nice. So, I mean, this current, uh, you know, last past year, uh, and I say this uh, again with humility and uh, to impress upon you, not to impress you. You know, that's not about that. But so like um, I work around, I don't know, 12 hours a week, maybe at the max now. I, I bought a boat. I'm, I'm traveling a lot. I, you know, I'm 50% of the year. I'm gone now. I, I, I earned a little north of 650 this year. And I say that with humility and, and gratefulness for sure. Right. But uh, but so 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 the systems are, is it was key, and so this was the thing that I had learned from Jason. I was watching what he was doing. I'm like, hey, buddy, here's the deal. If you're starting a coaching company, uh, I might be a little older than you, but I think I can learn this one because I, I I want this what you have already. Because if I had done this around the first time, well, wow, things would have been a lot different. So imagine doing this now at the beginning of your career, not like in your second career. And so now uh, we have a great admin team in place. Uh, we have systems, 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 systems. Now, and I, you know, I learned this from Jason. What happens, guys, tomorrow if I get hit by a bus? Can this business still run? And I mean, that's what people, they never like to talk about it. But the fact of the matter is now I don't have to be here anymore. We have enough agents here. And I think, what do I have? Five or five, six agents now. And so, I mean, and everybody's doing their own thing. And we're supporting them and, you know, collaboration with the Sims group as well. But we, we've actually grown a business. As I'm, I'm not just a realtor anymore. Like this is not just a real estate thing. We've grown a real estate company and it's the bold guy real estate team, you know, and, and we love it. And it's a good brand. And we've, you know, had the people, you know, um, um, that come in, they support us. We got good advice. You know, I'm careful now, guys, what I listen to and where I get my advice from. And so, you know, again, I mean, we're on a coaching call here and I don't know how you guys have it structured these days, but this is some of the key things that you'll take away in all your life is getting on these calls and taking away these nuggets. It's these nuggets that's going to change your life and improve the quality of your life. And I, so, so one of the things I think, Joe, we've talked about this before, about it's about asking ourselves better questions about in life. So when an idea comes in now, anybody can shoot an idea out there. When an idea comes in, you just got to ask yourself the right question. Hey, does this idea, you know, will this idea improve the quality of my life and my family life and bring me closer to my goal? And if the answer is no, well, just don't do it. Or you can call your coach, Jason, and go, hey, listen, guys, does this work or not? I mean, so, you know, be careful who you surround yourself with and be careful who, what you're listening to, because whatever it is that you're listening to, trust me, it, that's going to evolve into you, know, you doing that. So make sure they're getting the right results. And that's the thing, right? So, you know, that's how that's how we've become who we are right now. And I'm super proud. We're only, what, what are we, Jason, two years in to this new team thing. And yeah. I mean, oh my God, you guys, this is blowing my mind. Like we got systems in place. And again, I can get hit by a beer truck tomorrow and take me off down the road. And, and the business will still run. Or a Coke truck, as I like to say, right, Tracy? <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah, nice. I love it. Um, dude, man, that's so cool. So, I mean, you're, you're able to earn a, a healthy six-figure income. Sure. You're helping mentor agents, helping them be mm -hmm. successful. Um, you've got other, you've got multiple streams of income. Just like I, I always teach people, if you yeah. want to become wealthy, you need to have more than one stream of income. The average yeah. millionaire has seven, just so you guys know that, like for context, right? If you guys want to have an exit strategy in real estate, don't build your business just exchanging time for money with no leverage because there is no retirement party with that, right? You're only as good as your last, you're only as good as your last paycheck, right? Really? And, you know, and now of course, now us with EFP, of course, I mean, it's different because we have the rev share coming in now. So that's another, it's a beautiful, like another form of income. 
Now you I, were I actually, can't believe it. you were actually my sponsor. And it's funny because yeah. you never approached me about eXp. We had talked about it. I told you about it before I was going, I was like, Dean, you got to look at this, but you know, I wasn't really open-minded. So sure yeah. enough, you went six months before me and, and, and yeah. did that. And we were both like Remax guys. You were in Remax way longer than me, but like we yeah. were like re- bleeding Remax, right? We we're yeah. all about that Remax. The and red, then, white, and uh, blue, baby. And then you made the move. And then, you know, some stuff happened where it, it forced me to kind of reevaluate the model that I was in. And I'm really grateful that it did. And we took a look at that. But I mean, what was it for you that made you shift from like the traditional model to, uh, you know, the cloud based model that, that EXP is? I mean, what was it that clicked for you? I'm curious. Well, um, well, this is a cool, this is a cool clicking story, but I, I wasn't feeling, you know, there's something, there was something missing. I, I mean, I, as, as years go on and I'm becoming more and more entrenched in soul work and um, uh, I'm missing it, it, it has to feel right. I have to feel things from my heart and it wasn't feeling right walking in those doors. It wasn't authentic. It wasn't family. It wasn't, it was, it was, it was a whole bunch of stuff that it wasn't that I, I wanted to feel something. I wanted to feel right about this. And so, you know, and this, this other business model came along and before I had made that choice, you guys, I just bought my boat and uh, I was, I was like cruising out. Dean, this is not a boat, guys. This is a yacht. Just so you understand, like, so, yeah. so I was out on my boat, and uh, and I was down in Friday Harbor uh, in Washington, and this other really nice boat comes in, and I get to meet the guy next door on this other boat. And so, uh, for any of you that are boaters or you got car buffs or whatever, I mean, you see another motorcycle guy, you stop at a gas station, you have a, you have a bullshit, you know, whatever. And so I met this guy on the dock. And so we're both, it's two days later and we're just yakking. We've become like little buddies on the dock. And so I've never been one of these people to walk up to a person and go, Hey, what do you do? That's not my thing. I think that's the lowest form of conversation, the way to start it. What do you do? That's not the, just to describe who you are. I like the guy on the dock. I don't care what he did. Now, after a couple of days later, we're having a couple of glasses of wine. Now this is night two. And, you know, we're probably getting a little buzz on by now. I have a few glasses of red. And I, so I looked at him, I said, Glenn, I said, what do you, like I said, how do you express yourself to the world, right? I said, because you're such a neat human being. And he says, well, Dean, he says, I started a little company called EXP Realty. I'm like, shut the front door. And I had, at the time, so here's the founder and the CEO and Glenn Sanford. And he, I had known him for two days and didn't know what he did because they didn't ask. And so, um, and I got to know this man. And then he came and then we started talking about, oh my God, Glenn, and I'm here. I'm actually here with a binder. I'm about to make this move to EXP, but I was here studying it, and that's why I went away on my boat for a couple of weeks, just to, this is a big career change. I want to know what's going on. And then I meet him at a, at a, at a dock in Washington. I'm like, oh my God. So we sat and we talked for another day and he goes, Dean, this is the reason I did this. He says, I know about all you beautiful, beautiful agents out there. And he says, you know, you work so hard. And he says, you're never so good as your last paycheck. And he says, I wanted to change that to a different business model. And he says, I'm done with all this ego. And he says, I'm done with all this stuff. And he says, I wanted to create something that was going to work for agents, but not lose the quality of real estate and, you know, what we do with people. And so I met him. I came right back and I called my sponsor. I said, Dan, sign me up, baby. I'm done. So that was what, that, that's the key. I felt it. And they, we have a business model here. It's about giving back. And I mean, my passion on the planet right now is to give information to people that's going to help in, you know, improve the quality of their life. And so that's what Glenn is all about. And so I knew I was buying into the right thing. So I just, so, we, so I was done. That's awesome. That's so cool. I, I, I got to interview Glenn a couple of years ago and like, he was in his, this is a newly minted billionaire at the time. And he's sitting in his like nice RV, but like nothing crazy. He's living in an RV, multi-billionaire, visionary. And just then, honestly, he was just humble. Just a great guy. If you haven't listened to the interview, guys, you need to t- listen, you need to listen to it. But like, I was like, man, this guy's values are so in line with mine. It's crazy. You know, I've always been looking for a way. How can I give more back to my partners? How can I give them a better life? How can I improve and give them the freedom that they've been able to give me? Like, what's the model? What, what is that? And I was like trying to figure out how to recreate it. And then for me, that that's when the light bulb went off. When I actually, with an open mind, looked at it, I was like, this is, I can't unsee it. And it just, yeah. it's been such a blessing in our, not just my life, but the lives of so many people that we're collaborating with. And we're just getting started. We're just getting, um, scraping the surface. But what's so cool is to practice real estate from a non-ego standpoint, from oh. a place of collaboration and being real, like just being authentic. There was so much, I hate to say it, but like there was so much fake uh, in, in the, in the real estate environment that we were in. And it wasn't collaborative. That was the thing that really like kind of killed me is I thought coming in the industry that it was going to be really collaborative. And it just wasn't, it was like a bunch of like people chasing ego 
And with a scarcity mindset being like, well, why would I share my playbook with you? Because yeah. you're just, you're my competitor. 100%. And it's the weirdest thing because you could, you could make friends or acquaintances. And, and I certainly did as mm-hmm. you did, but like the collaboration was so fucking not there. It was mm-hmm. unreal. Like I remember I'd share my playbook. I'd spend two hours like sharing with one of my competitors and I didn't see it that way. And then I'd ask a simple yeah. question at the end. I'd say, Hey, so what can, what's one thing you can share with me? And these were really successful agents that have been in the business. They're like, you got it all figured out. And I'm like, in my head, I was like, motherfucker, you can't even give me like one thing. I just spent two hours pouring into yeah. you and you couldn't yeah. give me one thing. And I think their mindset truly was like, Hey, if this, if this kid is willing to share his playbook, I'll listen and take notes, but he ain't getting nothing from me. Yeah. And I'm like, man, that, that just isn't what fuels my soul. Like, I love the idea of us leveling each other up. Like you and I mm. are technically competitors in the mm. marketplace, but we don't see it that way. Like you could ask me for anything in my playbook at any time. And it's yours. Like, here you and go. You've always you been that off way. My back. You want the yeah. shirt off my back, brother? Here, here it is. Yeah. And I know you do the same for me. Yeah. Like, that's just, I don't know. That's the way I see this industry. And I realize that it isn't like that. So some of the forces that we're fighting is that like egocentric, yeah. empty stuff. And a lot yeah. of those people are going to realize when they look back on their careers, they're going to not have anything to show for it. And so this is where I'm so passionate about helping people build sustainable businesses so they can have amazing lives. Because mm-hmm. you know this, Dean, you've had, you've lost some close friends in the last few mm-hmm. years, right? Mm-hmm. One thing we have a, a, a finite resource of is time. Mm-hmm. And fuck, I'll tell you, don't waste your time just chasing commission yeah. checks forever. Have a plan, have a long-term yeah. strategy, no matter what platform you choose, just have a plan, guys. I think that's really, really important. Dean, mm-hmm. I fucking love you, brother, man. Seriously, thank you so much for pouring in today. And, and you know, you have a lot of wisdom, guys. If you guys haven't met Dean Philpot, he is my sponsor in EXP. I, I came to you. Why? Because I trusted you. I had a lot of people that wanted me to be part of their group, but there was nobody else for me because of the genuine, honest connection that you and I had built. You were there for me when there was no fun financial gain for you or anything. Yeah. It was just like yeah. pure collaboration, brother. And uh, thank you, man. Thank you for everything that you've brought to the table. I would love to open this up though, to anybody that's listening right now. If you want to ask some questions, sure, I mean, sure. Dean has so much experience. He's been very successful, very. is very successful but I mean, this guy is living a lifestyle that most people can dream of. So, I mean, let's, let's open it up to, to questions, guys. Let's go to the gallery here. You can post them in the chat or unmute yourselves. I'd love to hear it. Or just some thoughts on today's conversation. Is there anything that kind of uh, hit a chord with you? If there is, like, let's hear it. I mean, this is a mastermind group. Don't be shy. Hey, hey Jason. I- oh, yeah. Oh. Go ahead. Uh, just wanted to say hi to you first of all. I haven't seen you since the last Remax conference that we probably both attended. But um, one of the things that you said is that you um, your daughter actually started getting into the business with you. Is that how you've kind of put your team together now then? Yeah. So what we've done, um, I mean, it was, it was just going to be a father-daughter team, of course. That's before uh, you know, I knew where this next level was going to take us. And, um, and it just started to grow from there. And then, of course, Kate attracted another lady who said, oh, my goodness, I would love to start real estate. So then we added one more. And, and then, you know, by the time we got into the coaching here, we thought, oh, my God, well, why don't we just actually make this a plan? And so that's when we started looking for the right fit. So um, now there's six of us. Yeah. So that's the new plan. And so, I mean, I'm hoping that I'm mean, the hope, you know, I'm going to, the more I step back, she's stepping up right now. She's not, she's not all about the business right now. She's still quite, you know, she's 28. She's getting married this year. So there's other focuses, but you know, I don't want to be too far away anyway. So I, I always want to be around. I'm just not going to be the front face of it all, but I, that's, that is the new plan there. Right? Now, are you building it as a, as a traditional team or are you doing more of the affiliate? Uh, mine's a traditional team, right? So um, yeah. And then for your attraction, are you like, where are you getting your, your people? Are you just, I mean, I know we've known, you've been around for a long time. Everybody yeah. does look up to you, obviously. And same reason why Jason got attracted to you is the same reason why me and Jason have always attracted to each other as well. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, one of the things that, you know, like I'm just kind of starting to get into more of the attraction thing. Like I, I really haven't focused on it Yeah. Uh, just because I've got so many other kind of things going on. Um, but you know, it's, uh, it, it's something that's really important to me because I do see this great culture. And of course we're trying to build this great culture together and we're, you know, I'm looking at different things inside of my traditional team, as well as outside of the traditional team and trying to figure yeah. out how either to blend that or dismantle it and, and work on the bigger picture. Um, but right now are people just like, Hey, why, 
you know, like what's, what are you doing? So I'm, I, you know, I haven't done a lot of attracting. I just haven't. I've been really, really focused on the team. Just get, I, I, I'm, my, my brain works in different kinds of files. So it's like, man, I want this team getting to a point where it's really sustainable and I need to be here for that first. And so now that we've just finished up this year, now that we're out of the old, the old vid is gone, I think, or it's almost gone, the COVID, um, you know, uh, I think that's going to be one of our next steps is looking at a, hey, okay, so now what next when it comes to building our, you know, our agent attraction. And of course, Jason and I were talking about that a little earlier today. And I think, you know, we'll, we'll collaborate on what we're doing. So uh, I'm right back to square one, just with you there, Lane. I'm just, you know, I mean, I, I was, I was fortunate enough that a few people came into my life and my agent, traction was enough to get me going here right away and of course you know the rock star sit in front of me here and so um so yeah I'm, I'm all over some some new advice as well i'm gonna say this guys i'm gonna say this okay dean philpot never ever approached me one time all he did was just be there for me as a friend as a colleague in the industry and that's all he had to do to earn my trust mm-hmm. there and i've had a was, few calls since right yeah and that's what happens. Was, i've had a couple was, people there was a high producing agent in our market who him and I were number one and two at Remax all the time when I was there. Okay. Never once did he reach out to me, collaborate with me ever, not one time. Right. Then he, he was at, he was at made a career move and went to EXP and then he approached me and Joe, we talked about this on a recent call, but uh, I remember telling him, listen, you know, you never were a collaborator. You were never an open book or did anything to build any bridge with me. I'm sorry, but from a value standpoint, um, Dean's my boy. That's my guy. Like that's who mm-hmm. I'm going. That's who I'm going with. And, and it's so been it's, interesting. It's two two and a half years later. Now we're in this one, and uh, and I get I, and I do get a call. Like Lane, you're asking like, how is it happening? And I've been getting a few calls lately saying, hey, Dean, do you have a few moments? We'll chat sometime. And these are because I used to attend these conferences, right? You know, back in the day. And so there's people still remembering or seeing our results and whatnot. So that's all I've been doing so far. It's just shutting my mouth, which is usually hard for me to do, but, uh, but, but sitting back, but, you know, I think providing value and um, like Jason was talking about, and I guess we'll collaborate somehow and figure it out. We're, we're building out a a huge agent attraction piece lane anyways, for our group to help you guys with that. Cause we know we have the best value proposition. Now it's, we're ready to kind of like, you know, start, start, helping other people see that for themselves because we can help them avoid the same traps like Dean and, and others that I've yep. seen in the industry. So um, it's definitely something that we're, we're going to be launching in the next couple of weeks to help people. Cause like, listen, I don't care if you're an independent, if you run a franchise, if you're running a team, agent attraction is part of the business because like, you're in the business yeah. of helping mentor agents. So you got to get that out of your head. Like, Oh, I don't want to recruit anybody. It's not recruiting, but if you're going to be building a team, run a brokerage or do any of that, you need to have agents and you need to have a strong value proposition. And that's something that we've worked our butts off to build. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to, because we have so many talented people, so many mega agents in our group that we can all collaborate together and and help each other. So. Yeah. And I think that's one of the biggest things and reasons why it's kind of taken me a little bit longer to get going is just because we were trying to create that foundation of the value to people to say, Hey, you know what? I really want to understand why people are going that way. And, you know, with the systems and the processes that we've put in place in a short period of time, you know, we've only been yeah. now for seven, I don't even know, how long, eight months, Trace? I don't know. Not a long time. Um, May, May 5th is our anniversary. May 5th. Mm. Yeah. I'll say this lane by Dean, just being a good guy right? He's, he's attracted maybe a dozen people or no, like six, seven people d- to, to the organization. He has a passive income of a six figure passive income every single year, just because you know what, he, he was a good guy and had no ulterior motives. You know what I mean? Honestly, like that's, that's the value of the relationship. So always build bridges, always look to enhance and bring value to people. Um, play the long game. Don't get blood on your hands to build your business. You Mm -hmm. never know when it's going to come back to you, but I can tell you that for me in my life, it's come back to me a hundred X in so many ways by always just being that person that's just like tries to make time. How can I help? What can I value? Can I bring? And Dean was that guy for me. And, and, you know, I'm paying it forward many, many uh, times over now. And, and, you know, I just genuinely appreciate the friendship we've built. Mm -hmm. What other questions does anybody have? I'd love to hear other people's thoughts. Justin says, you mentioned real geeks. Why do you use real geeks and not KV core? 
I can actually, I can uh, give yeah, we, we just, we, we were using real geeks when I first started getting coaching with Jason and, um, and, uh, or cause that was just easy for us. And then we've recently just changed. So we just like, this is our second month now. So, um, so that's, that's new for us. And that, that was a great question because yeah, why, why wouldn't you? Right. Cause we, you know, we're part of that. Uh, Cole asks, are there any um, large scale EXP conferences like R4? Absolutely. There's two, there's one in Vegas every year and there's one in Orlando, but there's also one that's kind of like unofficial to EXP, but it's in Mexico. I think they, we went yeah. to it in, uh, it was in two Puerto years Carta ago. two years ago. Um, but now I think it's in Kabul that they have it. So yes, there are absolutely those types of events for anybody that's an EXP or if you, if you're into that, they're uh, called shareholder summits. When's Kabul? Uh, Kabul just is happening. Like literally, I believe this week. Oh, okay. See you guys yeah. there. Yeah. I think, I think the Orlando <laughs> one is in June maybe, or August. I'm not hundred percent sure. Uh, and then the Vegas one is, I think it was around November. Don't quote me on that though. But there are, yes, there are absolutely those events and they're in person now. So that's, that's cool. Yeah. And these are the nice events where you hear, you know, you get, you get in front of people and you, and you meet people and you collaborate with their ideas and you can bring back just one idea and again, change the directory of your life. Right. So, uh, and the one thing we we're talking about competition earlier, like there's, this is what somebody told me in my youth. There's no such thing as competition when you're creating. So just be true to yourself and create what you is coming out of your own heart. And then there'll be no such competition, right? It just disappears. And I've always, that always stuck with me, right? So be who you are to what you do and you'll always have whatever it is you want and, um, and stick with that little model for a while and see where it takes you. Hey, Dean, just quickly, a um, couple, couple of the myths that, that you probably heard too and I heard from people is like, oh, your referrals are going to go down if you move from Remax. On, tell the honest truth. What have you seen in your business and what have you seen in your referral business making the move? I can only say that I've probably lost, uh, I'm going to say probably um, a very minute percentage, right? So like out of the 100% referrals that I used to get, uh, now we get, I'm going to say 95. There's just been a couple there, right? So like 95% of all the referrals that I ever had, those relationships didn't change. And they just didn't. They just, and I mean, I, and I'm the same way. And I, cause I have, I, again, I still listen, I still have good relationships with lots of different brokerages and I stick with it and they stick with me. You know, and now when I can, of course, I'm always going to support our own business model. Are you kidding me? Of course. But if I have a relationship going on and we have a thing going on, absolutely. And people know they, because they know they're in safe hands when they come here to the bold guy group. Right. So, yeah. You know, and then I mean, there's always seen, going, to, going to be a little bit of, just going to be a little bit of shrapnel fall behind, but not much. Have you seen any new referral sources? Cause for me, mine went up now. I wasn't in Remax for like 20 years and any of right. that. So like mine, right. my referral business actually went up. Yeah. But did you find any new referral sources that came your way? You mean through realtors? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. 100%. Oh, and yeah. then what no, about no, your no. what about your commission income? Did you did it drop or did it go up? Like, give us the honest kid here. I mean, I, I we haven't rehearsed like any commission yet. income. Oh, you mean from what I was doing before? Sure. Yeah. Because people are like, oh, your, your business is going to go down if you make oh, the move. God. The fear no. tactics, no, I mean, right? No, we never lost. Even from the last year that when I left. Uh, no, we, we ne- like our momentum never switched. We were down for around two months getting our systems figured out. My momentum did not switch. And, we, and so I've never made less than the year before. I mean, that's always been one of my things in my head. We're not going backwards, baby. No, no, no. So no, no, we never went down. No, oh my God, no. And then we've got more business. I've, you know, this year we had more business I've ever had, right. you know, like in this new stretch, right? Yeah. Love oh, it. for sure. No, we're on a roll now. And, you know, and the bigger thing for us was like people just not knowing, like the customers not knowing about EXP. So it's always fun to be able to explain to people, what's EXP? Oh my God, let me tell you what it's not because it's easier. Like it's not <laughs> what you, it wasn't the old one. It wasn't the old way of doing business. Honey, we are this, this, and this, and we're all that in a bag of chips, right? So I, I love being able to explain that to people. And the, people get excited knowing that we're like, you know, that WestJet model, like we're owners. This yeah. is great. And we have a, you know, we have a, we have a, you know, support and collaboration with everybody. It just goes on in the training. I love being able to tell people about this. You know, it's a funny, I'm going to tell a quick funny story too of Dean. Okay. Dean's not the most tech savvy guy. Okay. He doesn't spend a lot of time on that, but Dean was smart enough to do like the 5% stock thing that EXP allows you to do where (laughs) you can buy stock at a 10% discount. So I remember jumping on a coaching call and I don't know, Dean had been with EXP maybe a year, year and a half. And I'm like, hey, Dean, let me show you something. And I show him how to use ShareWorks, which is the stock program. <laughs> he had $125,000 sitting there. US. 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 Didn't know no, about it. He had no clue. He, he totally forgot about it. He just kind of set it and forget it. And it was just like literally sitting there. 
And I thought that was a funny story, but that was a whole new income opportunity that, that, you know, nobody even thought of. Right. Sure. And, then, and I was able to tell people about that after going, oh, my God, you guys, I didn't even know this. But apparently I'm buying stock every month, 5%. Look, and at one point, you know, when the stock was right up, there was like a half million bucks I had in there. I, I couldn't believe this. It was shocking. And when Jason first showed it to me, it was 120. I'm like, what do you mean? That's mine? Like, what? Like, how did you do this? He thought he'd like <laughs> stolen something. I'm like, no, no, no. This is like your own money and you can cash it out. Yeah. Yeah, you only had to do that once. I figured it out after that. Trust me, I check it every couple of days. <laughs> so anyways, I thought that was really cool. Um, yeah. Anyways, guys, well, yeah. thank you for your time, man. I, I, I love this group. I love the people yeah. that we have. And, and yeah. I hope that you guys got value from Dean today. But um, two different businesses. If Dean could go back in time with what he knows today, you know, yeah. I think it's pretty obvious he, he would have structured his business with more leverage, played the yeah. long game, right? Uh, and not sold his soul for exchanging time for money. Cause I mean, yeah. uh, I can tell you, you can have all the money in the world, but if you have no time freedom and you don't have a good relationship with your family, it's not worth it. It just isn't. It's not the kind of money. No, anybody ever needs to make guys. So, uh, yeah. appreciate you guys, Dean. Thanks so much, brother. I uh, appreciate welcome, the time man. and I hope everybody has an amazing day. Thanks guys. Yeah. Thank you everyone. Thank you so much. Peace. Thank you so much for watching. If you really found this valuable, smash the like button below, subscribe to our YouTube page, and then look for more amazing content.